but the countryside was different. Ireland's natural agriculture is pasture and dairy farming. It is a green and wet land. But the colonial relationship with Britain was having a profound effect. Ireland was becoming a country of tillage, a granary for England. More land was brought into cultivation, supporting more people. The population grew from 3 million in 1760 to 8 million by 1840. The Irish peasant subsisted on the potato. What else was produced paid the rent. With increased population, people were forced onto the marginal lands. The ridges high on the mountain slopes where potatoes were grown can still be seen. So by the 1840s, the majority of Ireland's huge agricultural population was entirely dependent upon one crop, the potato. The agriculture of Ireland had been transformed to meet the needs of the British economy. This was a highly unnatural form of agriculture, really. What was developing was basically a sick agricultural economy. So that by 1840, uh, a situation had arisen where the courtiers, the farm labourers, the people at the bottom of the agricultural system were really in a highly vulnerable and dangerous position. In September 1845, people first began to notice the disease of the potato crop, the blight. As the leaves of the crop withered and died, the potato turned into a mushy pulp in the ground. The peasants watched their potatoes perish. The disease thrived in 1846, but abated somewhat in 1847. In 1848, the crop failed completely. Initially, tens of thousands went hungry. Then hundreds of thousands began to starve. Before the blight released its grip, a million, a million were dead of starvation and fever. The same disease hit the potato crop in the rest in the rest of Europe, but no other economy was as vulnerable as Ireland's. Only Ireland witnessed famine. The British government tried to do something about the famine. It was the first time a government had ever tried to ameliorate the consequences of a natural disaster of this magnitude. Yet it was completely beyond the imagination and the resources of the Victorian state to cope with a tragedy of this proportion. By 1849, the toll could be counted. The land was depopulated. Villages like these were left abandoned. Ireland was enveloped by a bitter melancholy. The great hunger still haunts the Irish memory. And I've heard of the dead, that there was green round their mouths because they were living on what they could gather in the ditches and the line uh, fern. Well, the pangs of hunger caused them to eat anything they could get their hands on to, to keep them alive. We always uh, say, um, that uh, God caused the potato blight, but uh, the landlords caused the famine. You see, to call it a famine is a misnomer. There was no famine in Ireland. It was just hunger. There was plenty of food. Oats, barley, wheat, cattle, sheep, pigs. But these things had to be sold to pay the rent. Yeah. Oh, tragic. Oh, yes. 
oh yes, the famine uh, destroyed Ireland. It it uh, it destroyed the the Irish. As British officials bungled the organization of relief, the Irish began to blame the British government for failing to relieve the famine. Some thought it was part of a British policy of genocide against the Irish. Although this was untrue, there was still a lingering suspicion that had such a catastrophe happened in the home counties, then a million people would not have died. Even those who were not prepared to formulate their charge against Britain in such high terms as genocide, and there were some who did, in fact, who believed that it was willful neglect in order to solve a Malthusian population problem. But even those who didn't go that far cited the famine again and again as the ultimate statement of British unfitness to rule Ireland. The fact that it had actually happened, that such massive loss and horrific loss had taken place, and that it, the government had allowed it to take place, seemed to be, in itself, a major statement of British unfitness to rule Ireland. Not all of the people in these hovels died. Some simply left, taking passages for the new world. With no opportunity for a decent life at home, Ireland was losing its sons and daughters in huge numbers. In the 10 years after the appearance of the potato blight, nearly 2 million left Ireland seeking new lives in new land, new lands. One person in four. The population of Ireland today is still only about half of what it was in 1840. The famine helped to stabilize Irish agriculture. The land was now more able to support the population. But the core of the problem still remained, land ownership.